Is this Andy? Jason. Yeah. What's up, man? <laughs> How are you? Pretty good. Good. I've been meaning um, to call you for a while. I got caught up in the in the in the Rona, the Rona chaos. And I apologize. Okay. I I've I've owned you owed you a call for a while. Let's talk about meditation. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of cutting in and out, but hopefully, hopefully it'll stabilize. Okay. I have a question about Asana. And basically, due to a lot of sports injuries and work injuries, I, my Asana that I, I've chosen is God. And I have a hard time keeping my knees together. So intuitively, I kind of bound them with a belt. And I don't know if that's a good practice or not. I'm also, after I ran through the ADAP initiative during the Corona thing, um, at the beginning of it, I started uh, initiation to hermetics by Barden. And he actually gets to this and he says, if you're having difficulty with this, you can bound your knees together. Um, but I've oh, he not, does? And I've looked, yeah, he does. Wow, I missed that. It's very, well, it's like Barden, right? So it's like very slight and it's kind of like just so direct that you almost miss it. Um, so, and I haven't been able to find any information from like classic manuals on whether to use like implement. Like oh, you froze. <clears throat> Let me know when I unfreeze. <laughs> oh, Can you hear me? I think you cut out. Okay. Can everyone else? Hear, can everyone hear Andy? I can't. I can't hear or see now. Okay. Why can't I? This is really weird. I. I uh, my video is freezing. What the hell? Okay, I'm gonna come back in. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Better? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Okay, cool. So the last thing I got was you were talking about binding uh, your knees. Yeah. Barden. So Arden says, yes, I can't find any kind of definitive answer from any of the classic yoga manuals. Um, maybe I haven't looked hard enough. I, I guess my, my, if you want to weigh in on that, I mean, I, I appreciate what you have to say. But I guess my larger question is when I come to um, points in my study where there is conflicting information, what takes precedent and how do you weigh that out? Uh, personal practice and experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because um, because let's let's be real. I mean, like, you know, who are we consulting here? You know, like drugged out Crowley, you know, like loopy loopy barden like yeah you know, it's not like there's there's no peer review in magic you know so you get you gotta go. <laughs> but um in terms of the knees um it, it's it's no that's it's it's supposed to be hard like part of the like because otherwise that but that's actually why that's an asana because otherwise uh, and this is this is established i mean like <clears throat> otherwise it would just be sitting in a chair Right, but it's the it's the keeping your knees locked and forced together, which makes it a yoga posture. Yeah. Uh, and it is it is difficult. Um, it's actually surprisingly difficult. And the other thing about it is that, particularly as you get to get in, you go into med meditative states, your knees will drift apart without you realizing it's happening. And that's it's just part. Like that's part of the pose. It's almost like the belt is actually a good guideline. It can, it'll tell you if you do it correctly, it'll tell you when you're straying. I've got it to the point where there's like, if I, if I know that I'm pressing my knees together, there's a little bit of slack on it. So, okay. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, <clears throat> uh, I guess I would have, I would assume that the that the people that have been writing and practicing uh, yoga, you know, for thousands of years, have a better grasp on it than uh, some kind of, like you said, a loopy Czechoslovakian dude. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I don't know, or like, 
or 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 you got like loopy jason you know like what the fuck you know like <laughs> but um uh well i'll say this right so here, here's an interesting technical point about god asana god asana is not a traditional yoga pose it's a golden dawn thing and the reason that it's a golden dawn thing is because it's how egyptian gods sit in statues and so if you look at Egyptian, or maybe you have already, if you look at Egyptian statues, they all are in God Asana. They have their feet on their knees and the knees are together. So it was assumed that by the Golden Dawn and is still assumed by, you know, people who study the Kabetic tradition and things like this, that that was a, actually a yoga posture. And so the Golden Dawn would combine it with uh, the assumption of God forms. Have you come across that technique yet? Yeah. 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 So it was, it was used during the assumption of God forms. Uh, and so w once you get that, it's like, oh, well, then it totally makes sense. So, the, And that's the other thing to understand about Crowley is he's teaching the Golden Dawn tradition. But as we see, so the thing, here's the thing about Crowley, right? Like everyone, the, the opinion of Crowley is often like, oh, like he's, you know, actually a lot of his biographers would write this, like, um, what's his name? John Simmons and other people that it's like, you know, like Crowley's books contain tricks or traps or misinformation maybe some of you on the call have come across that opinion or it's like, Oh, like, you know, you can't trust what Crowley's saying. In my experience going through Crowley with, with, with Crowley, here's, here's how to look at Crowley with Crowley. You have like 80% him just being a writer, uh, which is a charitable way of saying like, you know, just ranting about himself. Right. <laughs> and then you have 20 or maybe less, maybe you have 10% magical instruction. The magical instruction is all accurate. And in fact, probably the most accurate it's ever been put. However, what you have to recognize is that Crowley was writing under oath. And so, and there's multiple oaths at work there. One was the Golden Dawn oaths, right? In terms of secrecy on all the Golden Dawn material, which Crowley um, intentionally broke. And if he hadn't broken it, we wouldn't know anything about the Golden Dawn. And so... Basically, he was sworn to secrecy about everything in the Golden Dawn, including Assumption of God forms and the Kabbalah and Nokian and Tarot and all that stuff that is now what everyone is just, is the first thing that people encounter when they come into this stuff. But when he went through his Enochian experiences in Algeria, he decided that he was a higher initiate than the people who started the Golden Dawn. So therefore, he could choose to break the oaths if he wanted to, right? And, it, and great, because if he had it, we wouldn't have it. So he released all the information in the Equinox. So he freely talks, so he freely discusses everything in the Golden Dawn. And now we have, because Rigardi then broke his oaths, now Rigardi released all the great papers from the New Zealand branch, which, which, which as a point of trivia, by the way, that you will appreciate, the Golden Dawn material that was released by Rigardi in the 50s is from the same branch that Jazz Coleman later joined, which yeah. is the New Zealand one, right? So, um, however, then there's the OTO. Right. And you'll notice that so Crowley joined the OTO, became the head of the OTO and never broke his OTO oaths on secrecy. So which is basically sex magic information. So you'll notice that all throughout Crowley, he will talk about the only thing that he uses word games around or is taciturn about. Well, I won't say word games because like, you know, like he may be writing obliquely, but it's just because he's playing with language and, and being clever. But the only time where he obfuscates anything he actually doesn't obfuscate anything except the central secret of the OTO. That's the only time that he's taciturn about it. So you can now find all that information on the internet. So if you have that, you know, Crowley is very straightforward. So that's in terms of the, um, so I actually find Crowley to be a fairly authoritative source because not only, <clears throat> he was the only person, he's actually the only primary academic source in a sense on the golden dawn that actually broke the oaths and discussed the actual material so he was the only person that actually went through that that then released the information so i think he's fairly authoritative in that sense and then so that's goddess on so 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 that's i think for whatever reason important to realize that goddess is a is an artifact of the golden dawn and not of not of traditional yoga Probably why I'm not finding a lot on it in the classic manual stuff. I don't think it's in there. If it is, um, yeah. So, um, 
and in fact, none of Crowley's are in the the uh, so uh, so here's just for academic uh, reason the, the other Crowley's other postures come from Alan Bennett, who got them from studying Theravada in Ceylon. So they're they're Buddhist postures, not Indian ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, so personally, I like dragon the best, but uh, but only with the bench because otherwise it's too hard on the knees. I've already, you know, like you, you warned against it and Crowley does too. It's like, don't, don't change your asana, you know? And now that I'm whatever it is, five months into the practice, I'm not about to switch it up. Okay. I'm going to, so you, you know. So you're doing God? Mm hmm yeah. 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 I mean, and then, so it's just, so the, is there, there's an injury difficulty with keeping knees together or is it just the practice? There is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's working itself out slowly. It's, it's kind of a trip. Like I go to a chiropractor and all that kind of stuff, but my, my like alignment now is getting really good. Like I, it, it's, it's almost like I'm self-correcting. Um, and I, I don't know if that's part of like the Kundalini kind of thing going on, but you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I guess that makes a lot of sense now that the God stuff is not from like the Hindu side of things. So that clears up a lot and I'm just going to keep doing it. I, I think that the pra my practice is going decently. So I, awesome. I think, I think the other thing I, you mentioned this in the apt initiative and I'll, I'll just kind of move. I'll let you go on after this, but you mentioned reading Liber four and initiation into hermetics is very good in tandem. And I would highly recommend that to anybody. They're like, like one is like, I read Barden in the morning, kind of like this like masculine, kind of like hiking boot, very like direct. And then at night, like full, you know, the, the wackiness of, of Crowley really works. <laughs> but they're very good. They're, they're very good to like double fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's your, what's your experience been like overlapping the material? Like where are you seeing, seeing the overlaps? Do they, they're just, I'm, you know, I spend about an hour in the morning reading like Barden and, and kind of uh, digesting that stuff. And at night I'll dig into the, the Crowley stuff. And it's like, it's like they're talking to each other. They like the, the two things, like they, uh, they just kind of like wind in and out. They, they work beautifully together. And huh. questions that I have about one, the other one will, come, will kind of weigh in on it and vice versa. So they're, they're, um, they're really great with that. I, and you mentioned this in uh, the psychic protection course. I just finished that. And I, you mentioned pairing Dion Fortune with Crowley as being a good thing. And I, I just, I, I, it's coming to, I think it's coming pretty soon. I ordered uh, the psychic protection one from Fortune. So that'll be fun to kind of fold in. That book has made more people paranoid than any other yeah. occult book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like, like that book, I reread that book recently, by the way. Yeah, because I talk, we're gonna, actually going to talk about it in the next Alpha and Chaos units. And like, man, you get like 100 pages into that book and he st she starts talking about like statues giving her, like somebody put a Buddha statue out in the hall of my apartment building and it was sending bad vibes at me. And then it's like, werewolves are real. And then it's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> But then there's good, and, 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 but then at the end, but there's a really good, I actually pull out, oh, well, I'll just give this, the two, the key to that book, I think, and I talk about this in Alchemy, is understanding the nature of entanglement with other people, which she said, she, that's her core point from that book, which is uh, a fear or desire of other people is what allows you to become entangled with them. And that was worth all the werewolves or real shit. But they could be real. I mean, who am I? Like, fuck, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So, so the thing, the thing about Dion Fortune is. So actually, this makes a great this makes a great counterpoint in a sense to to where I'm talking about Crowley being um, uh, clear with Golden Dawn stuff. So uh, Dion Fortune never broke. Was it, Dion Fortune and Crowley were both Golden Dawn initiates and probably the most intelligent, well, among the most intelligent, the most, the best writers, let me put it that way, outside of Yeats, obviously, but he wasn't writing directly about it. Um, but she writes at length about 
the Golden Dawn, but not the OTO, but she never broke her Golden Dawn oaths. So constantly throughout Dion Fortune, she's saying, and I must not give away the practical keys of the Kabbalah for students will find themselves in grave danger of without having the proper interplane contacts. And it's like, one thing Phil Hines said to me, it's like they, in the Chaos Magic days, like, you know, like when they started doing lots of Chaos Magic, like all these Golden Dawn and, and OTO initiates would come up to them and be like, do you, have co- do you have contacts with the secret chiefs? You can't be running a lodge without contacts with the secret chiefs. And Phil Hines would say like, well, no, but we have a secret cheese. And then they would pull out a plate with cheese on it and lift like a thing. On the- <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so like Dion Fortune is like the smoke to mirrors ratio on Dion Fortune is way worse than Crowley. But then you read Crowley and it's like, he gives you all the techniques where Dion Fortune is basically like elaborate. So based on a good case in point is if you read 777, it's got all the Kabbalistic attributions. And then if you read Mystic Kabbalah, Dion Fortune just elaborates long streams of prose just from those tables, but she doesn't give you the tables. But that said, she's much, she's really clear. Uh, anyways, Andy, by I, the way, everyone, Andy, Andy is my big brother. I've known Andy since I was like, what, six, 15 or 16. We were both podlings. Yeah. 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 I, and I, I used to talk Andy's ear off with like, Andy had to be subjected to my early, like, you remember my early shamanic rantings when I was first figuring all this stuff out and I was just like, fucking like, I don't even remember. I just, just, I remember there was one car ride that we took to like LA or something where I just nonstop ranted for two hours and you very patiently listened to my fucking rambling. And now, now here we are. I'm still rambling. Yeah, it, was, it was like hearing the Beatles play in the cavern. Oh, you know? <laughs> that's not like the nicest thing anyone's ever seen that said to me. <laughs> Yeah, or I mean, whatever the birthday party, and you know. Ah, uh, that's even better. We're also but both I, deaf from going to see Mogwai play live. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny talking about the fortune stuff and the and the Kabbalistic thing too, and uh, not exposing too much. Is Barden does that, and he kind of like leads on. He's like, much can volumes can be written about this, and I will in the future. It's like they they're very good salesmen. They're always like keeping you looking forward to the next thing um it's funny oh, like the next oh the next book they're gonna write or whatever yeah 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 oh. <laughs> yeah it's i'm like you you got my money friends like i'll go along with it but that was he was gonna write one for every tarot card but then they took them out it's his thing speaks to me a lot when we were doing the adept initiative i mean at kind of a trippy thing was the, at the first mention of his name, I, I literally felt a tap on my shoulder. Whoa. And it was, it was like, it, it's, it's been a trip. Uh, that's been a really interesting thing. So yeah, I'm having a lot of that's, fun with that's crazy. Name, man. That's awesome. So you're, okay. you're getting, you're getting along well with you're working through initiation of hermetics. Yeah. That's awesome. I definitely want to hear more about that. I'm using the 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 um, book. I forget who it was by Ron something. I'm using a companion piece. I oh, would Ron. love to see. Yeah, no, <laughs> I I forget his name. But the, oh yeah, I know what you're talking piece. about. Yeah, is it's, that good? Cool. I've never actually read yeah. that. Is that good? It's good. I'd be I'd be more interested in seeing a a, a Magic Me class on Barden from you. That would be interesting. <laughs> That's a that's an intense one. I mean, like, there's so much there. It's yeah, hard to. A of, there's a lot of great shit in there. Offline, at some point, I'll have to tell it's you. So plain spoken, though. Yeah. Uh, offline, at some point, I'll have to tell you about some Barden initiates that I've met who are fucking weird. I, I know people like who claim that they like had, could you know their teacher could fly and like all this crazy shit and throw fireballs <laughs> for real. You could <laughs> you go read the Amazon reviews for initiation to hermetics, and it's like people are like, I've had. Some, I'll tell you some about some phenomena that I've had, and it's okay. it's just one of the things like you just gotta ignore that shit when it happens. We have to we have to <laughs> unveil the secret cheese before this conversation is had, and then the secret cheese can be recovered after after the conversation and it will be kept secret <laughs> yeah. all right man it was nice talking super to you. good to talk to you but if anyone is in san diego go to paloma barbershop which is in the <laughs> best barbershop in the world which i still need to go to uh because as you can see i need a haircut again 
Ja. I, ja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's good salesmanship right there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll see you later, man. I'll talk All to right. you soon. Good to see you.